Do you need anything else? No, I'm good. So, do you want to continue to tell me that story of yours? Oh, right. So, it was a few weeks back. I was casually developing my game while getting another one of those screen hallucinations, explaining about video games, and then I noticed that he was looking at my screen. This looks really cool, but I can do it better. He said with confident eyes. Okay, show me. Oh, don't worry, I'll show you. I continued working. A week flew by and I haven't heard from him, not a single tweet. Wait, what is this? He copied my game and published it on Steam. And not only this, he has dangerously positive reviews. That's kind of funny because it's not finished yet. How did he get my code? And that's when I knew who he really was. So last time we left off the game, I had procedurally generated this desert terrain and started making some assets to spawn on it. And then I had some performance issues. This wasn't a big deal. I only needed to change the frequency of the item spawning. And it's fixed, as you can see here. So many objects, and the game runs perfectly. Now it's time to make some enemies. But what kind of enemies should I create? Spiders and bats. What do you think about that? I don't think there are bats in the desert. Of course there are. They are called desert bats. Interesting. I'll see what I can do. Anyway, see you later. Enemies or villains are a big part of video games. The quality or quantity rule really applies in this subject. You can divide enemies in games into two categories. First category is to make a quality iconic villain, which all of the game's plot is revolving around it. This method was famously practiced in Ubisoft Far Cry series. They have succeeded in doing so in Far Cry 3, with the Vas character. But they failed to deliver a proper villain since then. But as you can see, they are really really trying. The second category, you guessed it, quantity, and it's more popular in roguelikes, as it involves making the focus on the environment and using the enemies as a part of it. This method is actually focusing on the gameplay instead of the story. It makes the gameplay become the story. A good example for this is the game Noida, which has lots of enemies and beautiful environment. In most cases, the environment is your worst enemy in the game because it's destructible. Anyway, I'm going to choose the second option, which is quantity. Let's get back to catch roguelike. I also made my objects move, so I can explain about the enemy AI. In Unity, or even Unreal Engine, there is something called navigation mesh, and AI uses it to understand how to move in the world. To make it possible to find path between start location and the destination, a navigation mesh is generated from the world's collision geometry. Yeah, that blue stuff on the screen, that's the navigation mesh. And that's where the AI can go to. Most of the time, a game will make the navigation mesh process, which is called baking, when the game starts. But in my case, I have geometry which is created on the fly at runtime. That means that I have to continuously bake the navigation mesh while the player moves. But that creates more performance issues. I solve this problem by baking only the chunk I am currently working on. That means that the monsters will spawn only on the terrain which is close to the player. And now every capsule spawns as it should. After that I played around with the gravity a bit, so I can play some capsule bowling. It's quite fun just to mess around with the physics. Next, I have to model some stuff. And I don't have a lot of experience in modeling. So first I try to model a bat. This bat looks good in 2D. I wonder how it will look in 3D. And the answer was disappointing. So I tried again this time and I wanted to make something abstract. An enemy type which is horrible. The most terrifying thing I could think of. But more on this later. So I ended up looking for more assets and I found this bat and this spider. Which looks really good. I have changed them a bit and made them look more alive. And added them to the game. I have added animations to the game objects and used the same method to make them move on the terrain. And then I saw that some of them are spawning on top of each other. So it was time for some spider bowling. I also added an elf system and an elf bar, which looks dynamic. Whenever you get hit from monsters, you can see how much health exactly you lost. It's a very basic elf bar and I think it does the job well. The layout is probably going to change, but it's okay for now. Tell me what you think, 
I'm open to suggestions. I had to come up with a plan. All this work can be for nothing. Something had to be done to make this right. And to crush my enemy. Maybe a Facebook post? No, no. An angry tweet? Nope. I've got it. I'll add my own page to Steam. But wait. It says here that to add the game you need to pay a fee. Wait, what? What kind of fee? I thought they are only taking 30% of the revenue. Isn't that enough? That's $100 for each game you upload? Well, I guess there's no choice. I'll have to use my holiday PayPal gift card I got last Christmas. So let's pay the damn thing. But before I publish the page, I'll have to change something in the game itself. My game needs to be better so it can win the competition. Let me just model something for a second. So I ended up modeling this weird thing. It takes a while to understand how Blender works, but eventually when you know the workspace layout and where every tool is located, it becomes easier. I also made two more versions of this guy. Here they are following the player. I'm working on adding a text for each and one of them, and I'll show all of it in the next video, so consider subscribing so you won't miss those because they're epic. These guys are also spawning on top of each other, so I guess I'll have to change that. Thank you, Dave. What are you doing?